Alright, so today we are going to be turning to some more autocrafters as you can see down below here. I do have some of the autocrafters I still want to make that are one wide tileable. So we have a lot to do. Obviously we already have some that are archived in the autocrafting archive as well as my Discord. There actually are some that aren't in my Discord because I've made a video on it, but they are in the autocrafting archive. So yeah, going to be more than likely crafting all of these uh, that we have here in with a one wide tie level crafter. This magma block represents two by two blocks, which is different from honey blocks, which is why they're separated. And then we have all the different types of rails as well, or different types of walls, more common redstone ones that you use in larger scales. Also scaffolding, which usually doesn't get used in large scales, but can be used for cl uh, clearing out lava and stuff like that. And chests, you know, choker boxes and things of that nature. But I think we are actually going to focus today on the sea lanterns. So sea lantern is not something that you would normally want to do. Some people actually do use sea lanterns as the floor to fill in the bedrock. It also is non-spawnable because it is a light source as well as it will spawn proof below uh, with because it is the light and it provides the light to stop mobs from spawning. Also there is stained glass which we should do as well. And we'll maybe add some things but this is like the rough uh, blocks I want to auto craft at some point, but today, like I said, we're gonna focus on the sea lanterns, which I think could be pretty difficult, especially in a one wide tie level uh, fashion. But I think we'll be okay. It could be a little bit difficult in terms of so how the uh, recipe is. It's a shard, crystal shard, and then three shard. There are three crystals in a row, and then shard, crystal shard again. So we may have to reuse the same circuit, but then that would require some things to probably reuse the same circuit the first time. We wouldn't want the area with the three crystals to be activated again. So that could be a little bit difficult. We'll have to see. But yeah, so like I said, we're gonna knock this one off and then we'll take get rid of it out of the here. And then we'll add it to the wall of one wide tile level crafts that I made already. If you haven't seen these so far that have been archived, I will go over them really, really quickly. So here we have the version one of the piston, one wide tile level piston. Uh, crafter that I used in my most recent piston factory. This was a B tileable due to the uh, honey and slime. People were asking why I didn't just put this up here like this. Well, because of QC, this piston would update this piston, piston which we don't want because that would unpower the hoppers. Uh, we didn't want to do that. So this one was uh, for that factory here, as well as this one that we have now is version two of that, and it is fully one wide tileable and it actually has a 20% increase in speed. I won't go over the speed and everything like that, but it is also the same uh, size, which is pretty good. Uh, for one more time level piston crafter, you definitely could improve it. People have said, why don't I use global clocks? And global clocks, yes, can be fairly easy to do. It just, in my opinion, ruins how auto crafters are made because in my opinion, it just makes everything really, really simple. And yes, anybody can make a Auto crafter that has a global clock, um, which is why I make it incorporate my clocks into the crafter itself. All in all, it makes it a little bit more satisfying to look at because I try to go for a perfect square if possible. Makes it really, really nice to look at, in my opinion. But yeah, like I said, this one is fully one wide tie level. Uh, basically, what we do is we just lower this down, or we just lower this uh, comparator area down. And we get rid of the slime block and honey block entirely because if we power this, this these need to be uh, barrels. And if they were droppers, they would cross power, which wouldn't really make a big difference. But um, if you wanted to transfer items, then that would be an issue. The surviving barrels are the best solution for this. And yes, yeah, so that's the main di main difference there. Um, obviously, it is faster. As you can see, there's a faster transfer of signal to this part here as well as the back, which makes it a little bit faster. And then you can see the repeater timings here are a bit faster because we do have a 20% increase in speed. So the reset has to be faster. The uh, sequence to start the cobblestone and redstone and iron, things like that need to be increased a little bit. So you can see here, it's also a three tick compared to a four tick. And there is less time to transfer the signal uh, basically around in a circle or around in a square for this matter. So yeah, that's the new piston one. Then we have this uh, one wide tile level observer crafter, which is actually the max speed you can do with a single uh, speed for the cobblestone here. To get this double speed, you would need a whole rewire because we basically cover every single side of the dropper. 
from this cobblestone, so there is no way to do it. You would somehow have to get a hopper here, but then also try to be able to power it from three different sides, because you can see we power it from all three sides and use QC to update that one there. So it is a little bit difficult to do that, but it is possible to get a whole rewire. But yeah, something special about this one is it is completely toggle stateless. So we make use of pushing a redstone block over and with the repeater, we use this one's no toggle states. Because you see the other ones, there is a toggle state with this says here. But this one, it is a repeater timing or repeater. So push over here and then it will retract back, making it toggle state. And out of a toggle state, and we do use as well this uh, wire here to transfer the signal down faster than what we would with a observer line or with a uh, no block and observer chain. And I did also learn this when making this crafter is that if you have something like this and you were to push it down for this example, if you were to quick pulse it, it would uh, first off the redstone block will then move into position to QC power of the piston. And then the observer provides the block update for the bottom piston. If you were, to, for example, not have the observer here, just have a, like, you know, a regular solid block, then nothing would happen. And even if you put a redstone block there, it wouldn't do anything because the piston cannot be powered by the face. So yeah, a very quick way to do it. And it also is toggle stateless because we need to power it once. And even in our case, we do get two pulses to go up here and work because the piston cannot push down when that piston is extended. So you can see here, even though I'm placing the block twice, you're only getting one signal down there, which is what we want. Next, we have my old repeater crafter. If I were to improve this one, I would get rid of the hopper minecart. Um, but personally, it is okay for now. I don't, I don't expect people to use a hundred of these crafters. So that's why I did the hopper minecart. It is, It can be rewired uh, fairly easily, but then you would have to extend it and be a little bit bigger in terms of length, which is why I haven't done anything with that as of now. This one here is my one wide tie level note block crafter. Uh, this one makes use of two uh, wood ones to make it a little bit faster. Normally, we only have one of each material because that's really all you're limited to. Uh, when you do one wide tie level, you can really only have three items that have direct access to the crafting table. With this one here, we have to batch it down, which makes it really, really, it makes it a little bit slower because you have to rely on hopper speed rather than just pulsing the dropper into the crafting table. So this one's a little bit different and it also has been adapted before. So this one used to just uh, have items to go to this hopper line down here. We did adapt it so that it will now shoot the items out and making use of the iron door. This will transfer the signal as well as allow the item that gets crafted to be dispensed out. And of course it is one more title. I would uh, improve this by just putting this with a glass block, but sometimes when I do make my auto crafters, I try to make it as easy to gather resources as possible. Yes, this hopper does not do really well for lag, but it saves you from having to get another material carrying it around with you, but it's not too big of an issue. I just think it in my head because I play survival a lot. For me, I always try to make things as survival friendly as possible, so that's just my thought process most of the time. Here we have a one wide tileable uh, TNT crafter with a uh, safety feature. So if any one of these were to run out, this would pull that side back. And even if this one were to run out there, it wouldn't be able to reach this observer because it's too far away. Now I do have it mirrored here. That's just to show that it looks a little bit better in my opinion when it's mirrored like that, but it will still work perfectly fine if you have the uh, sorters right here next to each other. That's just the easiest way for this type of crafter because there can be some left over because we're just firing observers down at these uh, crafting tables. Now, unfortunately this one is sort of directional in a sense, it will work either direction you place it, you will just have to find out which one of these droppers will update first because that will determine the order for the TNT. Because TNT, all you need is they alternate every single one. So as long as you figure out the order that they get dispensed at, you can then adjust it to what is needed for you. This one here is one that I am really proud about is the one wide tileable uh, sticky piston, redstone torch, lever, as well as apparently candles. They can also be all crafted within this one crafter, and it also is one of the ones that looks the most uh, square in a sense, besides this top part. Uh, but that's just to include the on-off switch in it. We could very easily cut it down a couple blocks, 
uh, by just having this here and we get rid of all this stuff up here, but that's not too big of an issue. Because when you do an on-off switch, you want it to make sure that when you pull the observer out that's transferring the signal, you don't want it to uh, send a signal down. So this one here, if we were to put an observer right here, and we were to retract that up, this observer would see that and then send another pulse down, which would then ruin the crafter. So when you're doing an on-off switch, always make sure that when you retract that observer, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't send a signal to anywhere it's not supposed to go, which is why this one has a glass here. And that's why we have that um, for that. Same thing for all my autographs, as you can see, that wherever I retract this observer out of the sequence, it doesn't power anything, which would cause the crafter to break once you turn it off. And we got one more as of now, which is my one wide tie level copper crafter, which definitely took me some time to do, but I think it was really, really worth it um, in terms of a well as the use case for a lot of hoppers for main storage or any other large storage thing does with a lot of hoppers, including my auto crafter. So you can make an auto crafter to then make more auto crafters in a sense. So that's my own goal here is to make an auto crafter for every single redstone component. That way, whenever you need that root component in large quantities, you don't need to go out and craft it yourself. But yeah, this one here, fortunately, does use a couple of toggle states, but it's not too big of a deal in my opinion for this type of situation. For those ones, it was kind of just a challenge that it is possible, which it definitely is, but it just requires a lot more effort and thought process. This one, you really couldn't do the redstone block thing just because of the area I wanted to keep it down to. But this one is, as you can see up top here, repeater heavy. That's just to add more delay. Something special that you may not end up known, but if you do use uh, two tick repeaters with observer pulses, you will only get one pulse for the next observer that observes it, which is really, really uh, key to add in more delay because this two tick repeater is eight game ticks compared to the two tick observer. So this right here, you will see just how much longer this sequence or this delay is compared to this one over here. We'll activate them both at the same time. The very important thing is we only get one pulse on this back one. It's about four game ticks later, which can very much add up. You're basically doubling your delay just by doing a two tick repeater and it makes it a lot easier to add a bit more delay because with the hopper we have two different dummy items here we'll turn this crafter on just to show you um what the sequence is so it was one of the hardest ones to kind of do but i think i did pretty well especially with the reset time there's no time wasted for that which was hard to do but as well as to keep it within the hopper speed of the transfer of the iron into the uh, dropper there for it. But you can see here, it is quite, quite quick, especially for being one wide tidable and handling dummy items as well. So there's two dummy items plus the actual crafted hopper, which means just to get the items out of the crafting table, it's 24 game ticks, which is roughly a little bit over a second just for to get the items out of the table, not including the time it takes the item to get into the crafting table in the correct order. But this one I am very proud of besides the toggle states, but there's really not much you can do with that, unfortunately. So yeah, let's head on to the auto crafter for today. <laughs>
right? As you saw from that time, I was going to go through a lot of iterations for this crap right here. And unfortunately, when testing, I did have to add a, another input line for the uh, crystals. Just because of how fast the crafter is, I do have to have 2x input. And unfortunately, without having to do a whole redesign of the layout, I had to include a hopper minecart for this crafter as well. Like I said, it's not ideal. You can very, you can probably, uh, you can definitely redesign this where you don't have to use a hopper minecart uh, for the crafter. But without doing a whole redesign, which I do not have time for, um, you can, would be able to change this to not have to use a hopper minecart because it is a bit laggy to actually include a hopper minecart in an auto crafter on a smaller scale. It doesn't really matter, which I don't plan. Think anybody would use uh, this many sea lanterns per hour. So, uh, but yeah, if you do want to do that, you probably could. Uh, if you do actually want to do it and you actually get it to work without the hopper minecart, I would love to see what you actually did. That way I can learn myself. But yeah, this one here, like I said uh, in the beginning of the episode, I do try to keep a perfect square. This one honestly isn't the best because we have so many empty blocks here. Um, but I think it's okay for what it does. I would improve the uh, reset time a little bit and make use of this down here. I would have tried to find a way to make it a little bit faster, but without making one any bigger, this is perfectly fine for our use case. So yeah, this crafter crafts 2,250 sea lanterns per hour, um, which is fairly, fairly good for the size of it, and it is one wide tie level, of course. Yeah, 2,250 sea lanterns per hour is pretty pretty good for one wide tile you probably need like a couple like five or six of these and you already got over 10,000 ceilings per hour that can be crafted in such a small little space which is a benefit of one wide tile as well as ease of building because if you tile these next to each other it's really really easy to build these in large quantities if you were to do so the special with this crafter which makes it a little bit directional is you would have to figure out the direct correct direction uh for this to be powered in the right order at the very end because what we do here is we power at the very end, we power both of these at the same time to get that final two items, but it does get double pulsed. So this shard would have to double pulse and not the uh, crystal here. So if I turn it on, you probably saw me running it in the actual time lapse, but just to show you what it looks like inside the table here, you can see just how quick the, the sequence is itself. But like I said, unfortunately, the reset is a little bit slower. And like I said, we have to use 2x input for the crystals, which I wasn't planning on doing, so which is why this is kind of like, you know, thrown together in the last minute, but it does kind of work. And the timing of everything here is pretty, pretty good until the reset. There's really not a way to get this faster without making it bigger um, because of the way we power this stuff, unfortunately. This is the fastest I could get it to do, and yeah, like I said, it's not the best. But yeah, 2,250 sea lanterns per hour is nothing to be ashamed of while it is being one wide tile level as well. We have a observer tower here, but that's how we had to, have to delay the circuit here, which wasn't the worst thing in the world. And yeah, this right here, if you were to use a note block here, this would not be one wide tile level, so we have to use a rail or a trap door. But this also does power the piston down there, which makes this a little bit this wiring a little bit easier to do. So yeah, all in all. Definitely do like how it turned out. Um, like I said, there would be some adjustments to make for the minecart, hopper minecart, as well as to make the whole sequence entirely faster because with the 2x hopper speed, we can push this quite a bit further. As you can see, this is kind of sits there for idle for about a second or so, which means we could get about five or about two more items into that uh, dropper before we would run into some issues. This is another crafter ticked off that list. We'll go to spawn real quick. So the lanterns are now done, and we have 20 more currently to do as of now so yeah if you do like how you do like this auto crafting series here and you want to see uh, a new crafter done soon uh, definitely leave it down below and you can vote which block you would want me to do next if that is something you would like to see and the most upvoted one or liked comment will probably be the one that gets chosen for the next video that's what you do for this one make sure you like subscribe all sorts of things and i'll see you in the next one